going to do a real quick video on how I set up my reprice it templates to reprice my Amazon FBA books, DVDs, and video games. I also use it for some merchant fulfilled stuff. I don't have much merchant fulfilled, but that's what I use it for. And my mouse just died. And there it goes, came back. All right, so first you're here at the dashboard. The first thing you want to do is create a new template. I deleted everything I had. Uh, template name is going to be FBA. This template is for. I only want it to look at FBA items only. Uh, listing date range. So for FBA, I have all my books that are over 270 days, I believe it is, automatically sent back to me. It used to be one year, but Amazon recently just changed that from 365 days to 270, I believe it was. I'm not exactly sure the number, but it's right around there. Um, so I select 270 now. Uh, I don't change anything in sales rank range because I wanted to look at everything. I don't change anything in price range. I wanted to look at everything. And condition, I don't sell anything that's new. So I only select the use conditions. And then I hit add. Um, create new template. Uh, I did that already. So now you want to go to view and edit repricing settings for that template that you just created. Um, this one says compare your new items against other new offers. I don't have any new items. Compare your used items against other used competing offers. That sounds good. Um, exclude acceptable competing offers. I don't want to exclude acceptable because I'm going to be aggressive with this template. Um, exclude just launched. I don't want to exclude them. Exclude competing offers with the seller rating below 90. And I include everybody and I'll tell you why. It's because this box down below. Let's skip down a little bit. This isn't in the correct order. I think this. I think this repricing mode should be the first thing you choose. Um, I choose reprice my items against buy box owner, so that's why I select everybody up here. Because if one of these people get the buy box, the acceptable, the just launched, or the one with the low rating, somehow they get they manage to get this buy box. I want to take it from them, so that's why I'm going against the buy box, and I have everybody included. So next is minimum allowable price. I want the lowest price my book at FBA is going to go down to is $10. So that's just because if it goes any lower than that, I'm not making any money. Default price to minimum allowable price when price is below minimum. Um, so say you have a book that's eight bucks, that's going to automatically bring it up to $10. I uncheck that because I have a lot of like magazines and stuff that are like eight or nine dollars that I make like two or three dollars profit on so if I was to reprice that manually down to say eight bucks this would automatically bring it up to ten dollars and I don't want that uh, maximum allowable price I have some items in my inventory that are four or five hundred bucks so I wanted to look at say about four hundred dollars anything above that I'm gonna manually reprice myself so default price to maximum allowable price when price is above maximum so if you have a $600 book, this will automatically bring it down to $400. I definitely don't want that. So uncheck that. Maximum number of competing offers to compare against is I want to look at as many people as possible. So I, I put that at 10. Reprice new items. I don't care. I don't have any new items. Reprice used items. Um, when there are at least this many offers, I put one because if there's at least one offer, I want my repricer to kick in. Default price when there are zero, I don't change that. I leave that blank. If the price of an item goes down by more than this, do not reprice. All right, this is the most important section that most people forget to change, and I put mine in both sections at 1%. So here's why. So say you have a $25 book. At 1%, every time you reprice, it can go down up to 25, 25 cents. Um, if you do that four times a day, you know you could lose up to a dollar. Um, if you do 20% on a $25 book, you know, when you reprice, you can lose up to, you know, five bucks. That's too much for me, and that's why most people, their books tank, and they're like, why did my book sell for $8? It's because you didn't change this section. So the reason I do 1% is because I also manually reprice um, twice a month, so anything that's not falling into this 1% um, area, I'm going to change when I manually reprice. Now, the reason I do 1% also is because I realize when I manually reprice, most of what I'm doing is just dropping the penny. Say this guy was at 20.99, he's at 20.98. I'm going to come in at 20.97, um, and that's most of what I was repricing. I was spending a couple hours a week repricing things by pennies. So this at 1% just removes all of those penny adjustments that I have to do 
and leaves me just with the larger price adjustments, if that makes sense. So that's why I leave it at 1%. You can get more aggressive, change it to 5 test it out, whatever works best for your business. For me, it's 1%. We already did this section, which was the buy box owner. Um, now, do not reprice items with the sales rank above. I don't change that. I wanted to reprice everything in my inventory and then only reprice an item when the price goes up. I leave that blank. Now, never price above Amazon.com. So, since I'm only looking at used offers, this doesn't really matter. Amazon is never going to sell a used item. Um, so I don't really care about this box. Now this box here, how much do you want to price below or above the offer? So this fixed price adjustment, if you leave it blank, it's just going to match the buy box. How these two have matched each other, $20.98. Or you can put one here as one penny and then you'll it'll, so this will go down to $20.97 and so on. So I put it at 1% so that it undercuts my competitor by a penny. You can match it if you like. If you want to be a nice guy, I like to beat him by a penny. Um, so that's what works for me. If you select this one, you can't select either of these, so I just use this one. Now the following setting applies only to FBA items. Um, okay, so compare your FBA items only against other FBA offers. That's the one I'm going to choose because I don't want to compare my FBA offer against my Merchant Fulfilled this merchant fulfilled column that's too cheap I only want to look at the um, FBA offers so now this one here the next one is upload my price changes oh sorry I skipped one the following setting applies only to your merchant fulfilled items doesn't matter this is only for FBA items uh, upload my price changes to Amazon after repricing so if you select this your your template will go live and it can process it will reprice your stuff live on Amazon. If you leave it unchecked, you can look at your repricing reports and see what it's going to do before you let it go live. So we can leave that unchecked if you want. I know my settings are the way I want them, so I'm going to click go live and click save settings. So now that's the template for FBA. You go down to your your homepage, there you go, you got a FBA template. Um, I'm going to go into repricing schedules and I'm going to set up a schedule for that FBA template. I want it to run daily. I personally do three times a day, morning, noon, and night. So at 8 a.m. I'm going to do a template for FBA. Then I'm going to do another one at noon. And then I'm going to do another one around dinner time. So now my FBA template and repricing is all set up to go ready to go live. And I'm going to do a real quick one for Merchant Fulfilled. Call it Merchant Fulfilled template name. This template is for Merchant Fulfilled items only. Template criteria. So now for Merchant Fulfilled, I have items in there that are longer than a year, so I don't select anything here. You can go up to greater than three years if you want. I don't select anything. I leave it blank. I leave my sales rank blank, I leave my price range blank, and I don't sell anything new, so I leave everything, I check everything but new, and then add update. So there is Merchant Fulfilled. I go to View Edit Repricing Settings. So compare your new items against other new offers, doesn't matter, I don't have any. Compare your used items against other used competing offers, I'm going to check that. So now here's where you can go aggressive or you know less aggressive. So you can ex also, I want to just jump down, you can exclude uh, acceptable or just launched or you can go down here to repricing mode, which I think should be at the top. Um, reprice my items at the lowest price by same condition or better. That's what I choose. So you don't have to worry about excluding acceptable. It's just going to automatically do that. Um, so I uncheck that now that I, that, that I have that selected. I don't have to worry about that. Exclude just launched competing offers. So a lot of these times these just launched offers won't have any reviews or feedback. So if you don't want to include them in your repricing, you don't have to. Um, I want to include as many people as possible for the most part. 
um, and then I put this down to 70. I have really good feedback, so hopefully the buyer will compare which one he's buying from and choose me. You could include all if you want to get aggressive. I leave it at 70. Works for me. Uh, minimum allowable price for merchant fulfilled. I put it down to 10 also. And I don't want to bring the price up when it goes down below that. So I uncheck that. Maximum allowable price. I have books in there that are worth 800 bucks or so. I don't want it to touch that really. So I'm just going to go to 500 and I don't want to bring that book at 700 down to 500, so I'm going to uncheck that. Um, I want to compare against as many offers as possible, so 10. Um, reprice new items, doesn't matter, I don't have any new items. Reprice used items, I want my repricer to kick in when there's one offer at least, so I'm going to leave that at 1. Um, now I also change this to 1% and 1% as we talked about before. You can get aggressive with that and change those how you feel. I already selected this to reprice against the same condition or better, which is, so if I've got this good book over here, it's not going to reprice against this book at, a, you know, 11.43. If this guy was to change 11.42, it's not going to price against him because he's good and this guy's acceptable. And this very good won't reprice against this good, if that makes sense. All right. Next one is do not reprice items with the sales rank above. I wanted to look at everything. I leave that blank. Never price above Amazon. I just leave that checked. I'm not really going to be competing against Amazon. I'm used. They're new. Um, fixed price adjustment. I want to beat them by a penny. I leave that at one. And then this setting applies only to FBA items. It doesn't matter. This is for merchant fulfilled. And now this one's the one that confuses me a little bit. This following setting applies only to your merchant fulfilled items. Deduct my shipping amount when competing against Amazon and FBA offers. So for me, my shipping amount is free shipping. So it really shouldn't matter for me. But I leave it unchecked because I don't want my price to go too low. Um, I just leave it unchecked. I think if you offer free shipping, it's not going to change anything. So that's why I uncheck it. And now if you're happy with your template, um, click this box and it'll go live. Upload my price changes to Amazon after repricing, so that's what I do. And I click save, and now I've got my, if you go back to your home, I've got my Merchant Fulfilled template saved here. And you go to Edit Repricing Settings. And now here's where, oh wait, no, we already did that. We want to go to the schedule. So now we want to set up a schedule for the Merchant Fulfilled. So we want it to be daily. And you can't set it up at the same time as the first one was. So we set that first one up at 8 a.m. You're going to get an error if you try to do that. It's going to say it already ex exists. So you got to change the time to 8.30. So now I've got one at 8.30 a.m. I'm going to do another one at 12.30 p.m. And then I'm going to do another one at 5.30 p.m. Now these are all Eastern times, so adjust the time for wherever you're living. These are all Eastern times. And that's it. I've got my Merchant Fulfilled schedule and my FBA schedule all set up, ready to go. And that's really all i got to do. So hope you got some use out of this video. If there's something you'd like me to go over, comment below and let me know. Otherwise, have a good day. See you on the next one.